Hello and thank you for tuning in to the episode of Emma's Eye Catchers in association with Boyle Sports. For this week's episode I'm going to take a look and see if I can find five Willie Mullins horses who might be flying under the radar on the lead up to the Cheltenham Festival. The first one on my list has kind of been in the back of my head for a little while. Argento Boy, I think, was just really, really impressive when winning his bumper in Fairy House at the end of January. He might be flying under the radar slightly just because of the weekend he ran. Um, current anti-post favourite Jasmine DeVoe and Stable made a course ran the Sunday, which probably took a bit of the shine off um, Argento Boy's really good performance in his Fairy House bumper. Willie Mullins did make note to mention Argento Boy in his Sunday interview after Jasmine DeVoe won as well, noting that Argento Boy would have more improvement to come than his flashy or stable mate, which is something maybe to note. He's a half-brother of 2013 champion bumper winner Briar Hill. He's by jukebox jury. He's got that a pedigree to improve, and I just really, really like the way he did it um, when he won in Fairy House that time. He was in front a long way from home but he galloped all the way through the line looks a real honest tough kind of horse and that can be the type that suits a champion bumper the next one on my list is not one i would have ever foreseen putting on an under the radar list for the festival but i do think for seal vega has been written off too early on the run up to Cheltenham this year bred to be a champion always touted as a champion by willie mullins i just think there has to be more to come from him over fences on his day, he's an undeniable talent. Like, you look at the Arkham market now, found a 50 at Etihad, they couldn't live with this fellow over hurdles. I can't see why he would have regressed that much just for the switch defences. I don't think he's jumping as a major issue. Marine National is a horse we've seen, maybe might have breathing issues. For Cecil Vega, I don't think there's any real physical issues in him that would make me worry too much about it. Unreliable is probably the fair enough ex- assessment of him, but... Who better than Willie Mullins to get him right on the day in March? And I think if he's on song, like the options are open, I suppose, Erkel or Turner's. But I think at his best, he's probably good enough to win both. They're both looking like pretty open renewals at the moment, with Factor File probably more likely to go to the Brown Advisory. I just think that at the prices he's drifting out to at the moment, he's getting kind of more and more attractive. Might be getting sucked back into the Facile Vega hole, but... Ground, soft ground will help him, but I just think, yeah, he's he's definitely been written off a little bit too early. I think there has to be more to come from him over fences. Next on my list is St. Roy. St. Roy, probably not the right way to say it. I am from Cork, so you'd have to excuse the French accent. Um, But anyway, this eight-year-old, he runs in the colours of J.P. McManus. A great one-winning novice. He, look, he looks well out of his depth the, at that in that kind of company these days he was long way behind the Dublin Racing Festival but I think if he steps back into handicap company at the festival he might be able to make his presence felt again on the big stage things went a bit awry last time in the jumping department made a bad mistake at the fifth gentleman to me went off with the clappers that wasn't a great one of course behind El Fabiolo they were going so quick and he made he made that mistake at the fifth I'd say he just lost his confidence a small bit I'd forgive him for it, to be honest. He was eye-catching the time before that in a fairy house handicap off off a mark of 151. Thought he stayed on well at the end that day under Jodie McGarvey. He was dropped a pound for his most recent effort at the DRF. Um, He's been given an entry in the Grand Annual and the plate. I'd imagine the Grand Annual looks like the most obvious target. And if he showed up there, I'd say he's probably one to keep on side. Next one on my list is another in the colours, a GAP McManus, and that is Zenta. I suppose Klaus Sutton were fairly spoiled for choice in terms of top class juvenile fillies last year and Zenta was kind of just one on the list there. She was a great one one winning juvenile of course towards the end of the season. She picked that up in an A3. Lassie Mab was her only conqueror last year, kind of just speaks to the ability she showed as a juvenile. Um, kind of an unorthodox start to this year, I suppose, which maybe is making her be a little bit forgotten about. Um, she went chasing ran kind of disappointing in a grade two chase down in Cork so they abandoned that and now they've gone back hurdling I just thought her her hurdles handicap hurdle debut at the DRF that was really really eye-catching and um, running on well there and that experience should stand to her well on the way to hopefully going to a festival handicap she's been entered for the county hurdle today she does have an entry in the grade one mayor's hurdle as well but I, I'd imagine like with Willie's hand being so strong in that mayor's hurdle 
maybe she might be one that goes to that county hurdle instead. And yeah, I, I, I wouldn't mind seeing her showing up there. I think she's a really talented mare. Last one on my list then is definitely one of the lesser known horses um, heading to, to, to Cheltenham from the Mullen Stable. That's probably Asian Master, who looks likely to line up in the Supreme Novice Hurdle. I'd say just because of the, such depth in with these novice hurdlers this year, Asian Master probably understandably being a little bit forgotten about on the one up to the festival. But in fairness to this horse, since he joined Class Sutton at the start of the year, he's done nothing wrong. And I think if you watch back his two hurdle starts, it's kind of hard not to be impressed by him. I think fast, slick jumping is probably one of his biggest assets. He's a really, really uncomplicated horse. And he showed a good turn of foot as well on both starts. He's likely... Look, I suppose it probably depends where Willie will send. Like, he's got so many in the Supreme. But I think this guy is nearly guaranteed to go there. And, you know, depending on how Willie seems to split his novices, it could be quite a weak Supreme. And this lad might have the ability to outrun what looks like big enough odds at the moment. I think around 28 to 1 at the moment with Boyle Sports. And, yeah, definitely looks worthy of his place. And hopefully can run a nice race for Connections. So those are the five I think might be flying slightly under the radar from the Willie Mullen stable. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you think is being slightly underrated ahead of the big one in three weeks time.